Hello, everybody. This is Evan, founder and CEO of Jinta Tech, and we are back again with another video. So today we're going to be talking about a long-standing issue that has made its way around internet forums, and this has to do with trying to assign a static IP address to your WAN interface on your firewall behind a Comcast gateway. Today's video, we're going to be using PFSense as the example. We're just talking here and I'm going to take you through some steps and kind of show you the reason why this is unnecessarily frustrating, uh, albeit very frustrating as it is, and uh, give you the solution here. So essentially what's going on is people are attempting to get a static IP address from Comcast. They'll have Comcast load the static IP to their gateway. Uh, they'll set their gateway in bridge mode to convert that to a modem, as they should according to protocol and then go ahead and plug in their firewall, and then hope that that static IP information, after configured on the WAN interface, will pass from the gateway to the WAN interface, and voila, you have internet. It's not happening that way, unfortunately. And um, it's not the administrator's fault. This is the doing of Comcast. Uh, they've deviated from protocol here, and they have some things that they're doing uh, proprietarily that's really making these things way more difficult than they need to be, which explains the big frustration behind this. So here's just a couple of look at some forms to kind of show you what people are going through. This guy here says, so set up a new network at my office. NetGate configured to WAN DHCP. Everything works well under bridge mode and DHCP, by the way. And then uh, he tried to take this thing here um, to his clients, assign the static IP, and essentially everything broke down. If you want to read through that, that is a synopsis there. What's really frustrating about this is um, network engineers and people who have experience with protocol are responding in ways that you would and should respond according to protocol. Unfortunately, Comcast is not following protocol, causing long strings of um, really no solution and no satisfaction across the space. And oh my gosh, is it annoying. So, you know, we see this here as well. Uh, same thing going on here, static gateway IP, assign all that, everything's configured the right way, and then we see things like this, you know, um, you can't put their equipment into true bridge mode, you know, they have a bridge mode on Comcast interface, you have something called advanced bridge mode, and then in addition to advanced bridge mode, you have something called brace, basic bridge mode, and all these different terms are getting thrown around, all right? And the same thing on this side here, um, it's just... It's convoluted. Okay, so what's the solution? So it, this is quite annoying, and uh, we're just going to look at some step-by-step -step notes here to kind of go through this. We don't have um, anything in draw I/O today, but let's go ahead and take a peek at this. Okay, so this is no doubt annoying and ridiculous, but this is the solution. So depending on if you are going the DHCP route or the static IP route, there are two different methods to get this done, which it shouldn't be, but it is. Okay, so let's look at the DHCP. So if you have DHCP assigned to your WAN interface on PFSense, essentially what's going to happen is, step one, you're going to put Comcast Gateway into bridge mode, as you should, because what that's going to do is convert that gateway into a modem. Perfect, all right? And then when you put a Comcast Gateway into bridge mode, it defaults into advanced bridge mode, which allows that gateway to still broadcast its wireless network and leaves the DHCP functionality on and a couple of other things. So step two, you're going to want to go ahead and after you put it into bridge mode and it defaults to advance, put that into basic bridge mode. All right. Step three, you just build your WAN interface out on PFSense with DHCP enabled. And then, of course, step four, you want to set up some type of dynamic DNS service. Duck DNS is fine or really anything else that kind of rocks the boat. And that's it's it. It's that, it's that simple. And in one of the forms that I showed you earlier, the issue was uh, this guy did this here um, at his office as a network administrator, a business owner, whoever it is, and then took it to his client's office and tried to set a static IP following the same steps, which these are the steps that should be followed if we're talking about protocol. And everything broke down. So let's look at why. OK, so. If you receive a static IP from Comcast, they upload that static IP to your Comcast gateway. This is what they don't tell you. Bridge mode, and there's nothing that anybody can do about it, bridge mode actually disables static routing. Why? I don't know. But that is the way that it is. So bridge mode on a Comcast gateway will disable static routing. Well, there goes the issue. That's why our WAN interface on PFSense or whatever firewall we're using cannot receive 
the information that it needs to reach the internet, okay? So Comcast Gateway must be set to pass-through mode. All right, now pass-through mode, bridge mode, advanced bridge mode, so on and so forth. What we're going to do now is talk about what pass-through mode means specifically for Comcast. So what pass-through mode is on a Comcast Gateway, it's essentially disabling all of the layer three capabilities and a few other ones of the gateway itself and then allowing and then that will by default allow that gateway to pass through the information to your um one interface and allow you to do your routing and your firewall and all that good stuff from there so although protocol calls for the gateway right to be converted into a modem via bridge mode that's not what's happening if and only if you're using a static IP address. So you're going to achieve pass-through mode through these steps here, all right? So what we wanna do is log into the Comcast gateway and perform the following steps. Step number one, do not enable bridge mode, all right? Don't do it, leave it exactly where it's at. Do not enable bridge mode, okay? So we're gonna disable the Wi-Fi connections. We don't want the Wi-Fi, well, most of the time you don't want the Wi-Fi broadcasting. We have access points and other things for that. Um, that usually are plugged into a switch somewhere down line, okay? We're gonna go to the firewall settings. You're gonna select custom security, and then we're going to select disable entire firewall. And remember, this is on the Comcast gateway, okay? And then in addition to that, we're gonna disable LAN DHCP under the connections tab. So after all of these things are done, now this has entered a state of pass-through mode. And again, pass-through mode is this pseudo state. Uh, nothing will show that it's in pass-through mode. There is no single button to select to put it into pass-through mode. And I'll repeat one more time to save you some trouble. This is not done by enabling bridge mode. Do not enable bridge mode, okay? And the above steps will put the Comcast gateway into pass-through mode. And from that point on, all traffic and routing responsibilities will be passed to your WAN interface. And static routing is not disabled via this route. So when you plug that one single connection into the Comcast gateway, Comcast will assign your WAN interface, WAN interface on your PFSense box, the static information. And then of course you have to configure the interface the right way on your PFSense box as well, all right? And the last little tip here is there's some whispers going around that on uh, some of the newer gateways being shipped out. If you assign, well, if you go through the steps of setting up the Comcast gateway into pass-through mode yourself, some people have mentioned that uh, they're dropping connection uh, periodically. Um, I have not experienced that on our side of things, but if you just want to circumvent this potential issue, go ahead and call Comcast, have them do it from their side. Apparently, from what the whispers are saying, there are people who have done it from their side, had some issues on the newer gateways, and then when Comcast does it from their side, um, those issues, those intermittent dropping issues are fixed. So that's the issue. That's what's going on here. Again, it shouldn't be this way. Uh, you should be able to set that thing in a bridge mode, convert it into a modem. Um, and then all the information as, as far as your static IP address and your gateway, just assign on your WAN interface and boom, there you go. But again, Comcast does Comcast things. And the moment that you get a static IP assigned and uploaded to that box and then put it into bridge mode, static routing is disabled. So I hope this helps. This has been a very annoying problem for many, many people. The forms on this are going back like seven years or so. Um, so I hope this helps solve some issues. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at Thanks for watching.